The Go for Growth Show. Powered by Beepo. Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Go For Growth Show. Uh, my name's Mark Engelman and I'll be your host for today's episode. Here with me is Josh Cobb, the CEO from Steps. Um, Josh today is going to talk to us about his business and some of the, the great growth that he's seen in a very short amount of time. Um, so Josh, let's just get straight into it. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do at Steps? So we're a, we're a digital marketing company just in the real estate industry. So our primary, uh, I guess, core business is website design, website development, and uh, we build software for real estate agents and offices and provide the, the strategy advice that kind of ties it all in together and, and we use all those things to help them grow their business. So um, that's our industry. We, we just work in real estate and uh, having, having a good time doing it. Yeah, great. One thing that one thing that I always am, am fascinated by is is people's journey from um, often an employee mm -hmm. and the transition into you know entrepreneurship and, and business ownership. Can you you know tell us a little bit about what you were doing before? You started your journey with Steps. Well, Steps was kind of born out of out of a problem that I had. <laughs> so, uh, I was a property manager for uh, about nine years before I got into. I, I uh, kind of before I started Steps, I was working for a property management consulting firm uh, as their marketing manager. And one thing that I wasn't very good at, nor did I really like that much, yep. uh, when I was a, a business development manager in property management, was prospecting and cold calling and uh, and all the things that people in real estate are, are very good at it just wasn't fun for me it was very uncomfortable for me mm. to go and knock on someone's door or call them if they've never uh, spoken to us before it just it wasn't something that I enjoyed doing so yep. I started exploring other marketing strategies and and how businesses outside of real estate got the phone to ring the other way yes. uh, and I started coming across terms like inbound marketing and content marketing and just fell in love with this idea that if you gave enough value over time people would come to you eventually uh, so that's kind of underpins uh, everything that Steps stands for and, and the products that we build and the, the advice that we give to um, real estate agents and, and businesses is if you provide enough value consistently to an audience um, who, who find your content relevant to them and love getting it from you, they will come to you eventually. Um, so that was kind of uh, the, the, the challenge that I had back as a property manager and Steps is really uh, a consulting firm to really mm. help real estate agents and agencies get the phone to ring the other way yeah. and uh, and really add to not replace what they're doing but enhance what they're doing yeah for sure for sure so you mentioned two uh, sort of key words that get thrown around a bit these days and they were uh, inbound marketing and, and content marketing um, and I guess you also mentioned another another doozy in uh, audience yeah um, now, when you started Steps, I, I know that you had a very clear strategy um, in in terms of building an audience. Yeah. Um, tell me about sort of that strategy that you started with, and and has that changed over time? And when did it change? So, for the first nine months of Steps, we didn't have anything to sell. We had, literally had no product and no services. Yep. Um, and. I had a microphone and a lot of relationships with people in real estate that um, I, I, I really thought, they, they have amazing stories and, and what always fascinated me was the story behind someone's success. Mm. Not necessarily what they do, uh, which is great, but it really the story of how they got there is it's something that I love hearing and I love listening to. So armed with a microphone and a, and a laptop, I, I reached out to the people that I knew in the industry and, and wanted to share their stories um, with, with the rest of the industry to inspire um, people to um, really understand who they are and who they, who, you know, how they've got to where they are, not just because of their work ethic, but who they are as a person. So um, that was my mission, was to, the strategy was to um, tell stories about inspiring people mm -hmm. to the real estate industry yeah. and hope that they would hand over their email address uh, and and would continue to get that content on a weekly basis. So yep. we, we have a weekly podcast. It's still going 130 episodes or something wow. now. Um, and the mission for the first nine months was to every time someone subscribed to that podcast, yep. we asked them one question. And that was if, uh, if there was one thing that you would love to know more about when it comes to digital marketing or social media or content marketing, what is it? 
and just just we didn't we just wanted that answer and we, we uh, that's how we built the products that uh, we got into web development we got into web design um, we started providing training courses on digital marketing because that's what people were telling us and we've been very fortunate that um, we, we've been able to build an audience not around not just around um, our content but that's helped us create products and services that we know people for a fact actually want in the industry and I have no doubt that, that strategy alone has um, has helped us get to where we are today instead of what a lot of businesses do when they start out which is just they start with a product and they tr they just jam it down people's throats as much as they yes. can yeah. and hope that they, it, something sticks and they say we're very fortunate that we have an audience of about 42,000 uh, email subscribers who um, when we have a new podcast that that goes out to or if we have a new training course that goes out to that audience and, and it's uh, they know us they they luckily we, they, they find our content uh, engaging and relevant, which is great. Um, so I think, yeah, we we, uh, we started with no products or services to sell, but we trusted that people would tell us in that initial nine months what they wanted or needed in their business, and we just mm. went and built it for them. It, it was really that. I know that sounds kind of simple, but that's kind of how we grew the business to where it is today. Yeah, right. And so. Um, Talking about podcasts as, as as using podcasts as a way to build that audience. Um, tell me about the you know the the day to day sort of planning and effort required to get that uh, regular weekly podcast rolling out. And yep. and were there ever any disasters along the way? <laughs> oh, for sure, there's always there's always disasters. I've uh, I think if I go back a step, um, the reason why I chose a podcast was um, understanding that real estate agents spend a lot of time in their car uh, mm. and it's very hard to watch a video or read a blog post while you're driving yeah. <laughs> or while you're, they spend a lot of time Probably in the gym the too. Safest thing. <laughs> exactly so it made a lot of sense to to do something that they could consume what that, that was part mm. of their daily routine and not interrupting it so podcasting seemed um, the logical solution it's something that you can do while you're driving you, you and a lot of agents do a lot of real estate agents listen to um, whether it's training uh, or coaching tips for, uh, when they're driving they plug it into their Bluetooth in their car and away they go yeah so that's probably um, if any if one of the mistakes I think a lot of businesses make is just thinking oh, I'm gonna do a blog or I'm gonna yeah. do a podcast oh, I'm gonna do a video series or an event yeah and they don't think well is this actually part will this kind of in, um, intertwine with the daily lives mm. of my audience or is it going to interrupt them so yeah. um, podcasting was natural for me the planning um, is I, I have a background in music technology so I studied music technology at the conservatorium yeah. of music yeah okay so it was it was quite easy for me to, to plug in a microphone and know how to edit audio um, so for the first 12 months I did it, everything myself yeah. it was the plugging in the microphone uh, organizing the Skype interview making sure that the audio was working um, sending out the uh, the questions well ahead of time making sure that the the person who I was interviewing knew exactly um, you know what what I would expect of them yeah. uh, and then uh, record the interview uh, have it edited have all the marketing put together around it uh, the email set up on a weekly basis, the uh, the Facebook ad to promote it out, uh, all of the stuff to promote the episode, yes. and then each guest that I had on the show would always make sure that I would send them a gift afterwards to say thank you for being a part yes. of the show and sharing your story. and. Um, and that system I've followed now, uh, we still do it to this day. Our podcast is just as important as, uh, you know, um, delighting our clients. It's the yeah. content, we're always waking up in the morning thinking, what's a question that we haven't answered on our podcast yes. or yeah. someone that we've interviewed that we'd love to. Um, so that's, um, yeah, the, the, day, the weekly routine has just become natural after yeah. a long time. But there were some disasters for sure. We had an interview uh, I interviewed a lady by the name of Wendy Alexander, who um, is uh, an, an amazing business operator at Barfoot and Thompson in New Zealand, and uh, realised after the recording that I'd actually deleted the audio. <laughs> so so uh, I had to call Wendy, and uh, who was on holidays in Wales at the time, and um, and, and anyone who's seen Wendy speak would would know that she is uh, look she's very honest and blunt uh, and that's uh, you know that's that's often that's what people love about her mm. 
and I was really worried about making that phone call. <laughs> and she said, uh, Josh, I, I actually wasn't happy with the, uh, you know, my part of the interview anyway. So let's um, let's do it again. And I was, great, <laughs> heck is that? Thank God. So <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I made. Which I, now everything is backed up, triple, quadruple. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we back up the audio a lot. So. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's been a it's been a good time, a good ride. Yeah, cool. And um, so you know, you launched your podcast. You um, presumably may have you know recorded a couple of episodes in advance. Um, how did that audience grow? And and how did you like you know? A lot of people are probably wondering. That sounds like a great idea. You know, understand building an audience. But how do you get those first few you know subscribers? And then, how do you grow that? Well, it's if I if I start with the mistake I think a lot of businesses make in the first instance is they know that no content is important. Yeah. A lot of businesses are just creating content for content's sake, mm. and when when they finish that blog post or that podcast or that video, they're on to the next thing, and they're not yeah. spending the time promoting it and yeah. I oh, there's a great saying by um, Andy Crestadina and Andy Andy Crestadina runs a company called Orbit Media okay. uh, Studios in, yep. in Chicago or yep. in the States and uh, an amazing content marketer and um, he has a great saying that uh, the New York Times doesn't have a list of the best books they have a, be a list of the best selling books yep. so it's not the best content that wins it's the best promoted content that wins and I, I've always that's always resonated with me so mm -hmm. whenever we produce a piece of content we would spend probably 30 to 40 percent of the time creating it yeah and 60 percent of the time promoting it yeah right. so in terms of building the audience and getting those first few subscribers it was really spending a lot of time um, creating the content but then an equal if not more time promoting it on the channels that our audience was hanging out so Facebook and LinkedIn and yeah. um, uh, you know other having our uh, interviewer interviewees share that with their audience and driving that traffic back to the website yeah. where the website was configured to collect emails uh, yeah. so we made that pretty prominent on the website um, so I think driving traffic is one thing but if they're not converting into an audience or you're not making it easy for them to do it yes. that's every all your hard work's kind of undone yeah. so um, yeah that's kind of how we that's how we went about it yeah okay and Great. still to still do to this day yeah yeah um, and moving on what's what's uh, down the track for steps what are some of your upcoming sort of key priorities and, and strategies to continue your growth and, and success well we've we like any business I think we've evolved into a company doing things that we didn't think we would be doing I mean, if you told me three years ago we'd be a web development uh, uh, doing web design and development I would have told you you're crazy yes um, so we're we're building now um, some other products and services and software that um, we're really excited about that we know for a fact that the industry wants because again we've we've asked we constantly ask the audience what are products and services that you want mm. um, and what are the problems you're trying to solve in your business um, so we've spent a lot of time in the last 12 months really going to the industry and spending time one-on-one -on -one with not only our clients but people that have come to our workshops and asking them yeah. you know what are the things that they they need in their business yeah so well I'm really excited in the next 12 months we've got some really amazing things that we're uh, we're going to impart on the industry uh, and look we're really we're really confident that um, or really excited to uh, to see them roll out because we we're, we're confident that their products and services that, that, that are needed yeah um, right. so I think if it's anything we're working on, is really the software side. Um, we're, we're kind of moving into a bit more software development, yeah. not just web yeah. design. Yeah. Um, and that's really exciting. Yeah. Cool. It, uh, I mean, from a business standpoint, software doesn't require as much human interaction. Uh, you know, if you're if you're a consultant out there, pounding the pavement, you know, um, money for your time. Yeah. Uh, software can kind of make money for you while while. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't need you as much yeah. so that's that's really exciting for me from a business owner standpoint is yeah. where we're going is kind of having that recurring revenue from other products and services that uh, you know kind of uh, work themselves yeah great there's plenty of uh, examples out there of consulting businesses that have grown into service providers and, and yeah. software companies and yeah. I think um, in some respects that's kind of a natural progression so it's very very cool to see yeah, yeah it's exciting um, so, in terms of um, tips for our listeners and our viewers, what um, what's your number one tip for 
any business out there that's really looking to sort of boost their growth and uh, you know their their kind of exposure I guess to the market and and um, if they're on their way down the inbound marketing sort of journey and feeling their way what's your number one tip I think today it's you've got to be hungry for learning mm. and I think the, uh, I mean, it's that old adage, this is the way we've always done it, are the most expensive words in business today. Um, the world has changed. It's not changing, it's changed. And I think um, uh, you've got to be hungry for learning. I mean, we, we spend, I don't know how much money on traveling all over the world, going to conferences that yeah. have nothing to do with our industry. Yes. But we go, we do that because it, it gives us ideas that mm. haven't been done in real estate before. Yeah. Um, and we bring them back, we test them out to see if they're working. And um, one of the things that keeps resonating more and more that a lot of businesses have um, really adopted is this content first approach. Yeah. And uh, ma content marketing has actually been around for hundreds of years. It's not new. Yeah. Um, and if they do a little bit of Googling, they'll know they'll see some examples and case studies of how content marketing was done 100 years ago and 200 yeah. years ago yeah and so many businesses are now going back to how that was because it's harder than ever to cut through the noise mm. so a lot of businesses are now bringing content marketing in uh, as a business strategy yeah and having that steer their entire business across uh, all departments so I think you've got to be number one hungry for learning yeah. and seeing looking at how other businesses outside of your industry have really evolved yeah. and why this idea of content and content marketing is a business strategy that helps you cut through the noise um, but you need to know that it, it's not going to drive leads overnight mm. uh, but eventually um, fortunately for us it's we're kind of hitting that payback period where um, uh, we've, we've got an audience now that we're very fortunate that we can communicate with yeah. one to one yeah. um, and that that no doubt I have no doubt that that has really put us uh, well ahead of a lot of people in our space um, only because we we're um, uh, we've really in, uh, invested in the audience and mm. giving them content that they want instead of pitching products and services to them. Yeah. So I think hungry for learning, uh, really looking outside of your industry yes. and understanding that content marketing is, uh, I think how marketing will just be done in five years. It won't mm. be this new thing, it'll just be how marketing is yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. And uh, last question before we wrap up, Josh, can you tell me uh, about any new pieces of technology, software applications or, or tools that you're using sort of today in your business that uh, are really, you know, making things easier for you, more convenient, well, helping you with capacity issues, any of those sorts of things? Probably with um, uh, kind of where, where Beepo comes into this is is our team over at Beepo is uh, our project management of our tasks has become a lot easier with um, tools like Trello. Mm. Um, so a lot of people watching probably familiar with Trello or yep. Basecamp. Yep. Um, so that's what I'm really loving at the moment is uh, is the the kind of Kanban approach of you know the uh, uh, what have we got to, like the three kind of columns you your to do in yeah. progress and complete or testing and then complete it. Yeah. So using tools like Trello just make it easier for working with our team over in Clark at Beepo yeah. and prioritizing tasks and everyone can see where everyone's up to. So I'm really loving Trello at the moment. Yeah, I think great. that's one that um, people should if they, if they really. Uh, mindful of, of process and follow-up and systems that's yep. one that I think they certainly want to check out yeah awesome awesome well Josh look thanks for your time I'll let you get back to uh, the digital world that you're heavily, <laughs> heavily involved in. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it's this mystical place called the internet that we just, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's interview with uh, Mr. Josh Cobb from uh, Steps, and um, we'll chat again in a week's time. Thanks, thanks for, everyone. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. The Go for Growth Show, powered by Beepo.